Welcome to the video lecture on microelectronic circuits. In the last video lecture, we have seen constant current source biasing in more detail with examples. In the current video lecture, let us analyze small signal operation and models. In section 4.4, we have seen large signal operation of common source MOSFET amplifier. And we learned linear amplification can be obtained by biasing the MOSFET to operate in the saturation region and also keeping the input signal smaller. Also, we have discussed various methods of biasing in the earlier section. Now, we turn our attention to explore small signal operation of MOSFET amplifier in more detail. The conceptual circuit utilized to study the operation of small signal amplifier using the MOSFET is as shown in this figure. The DC train current equation can be found by setting the signal source to zero as shown in this figure. The DC train current is given by ID equals half of mu n COX W bell times VGS minus VT whole square. In this analysis, we will assume that the channel length modulation effects are neglected. In other ways, let us assume lambda equals to zero. Before we proceed into the AC analysis, let us determine the voltage across drain and source by applying the KVL for drain source loop. By applying KVL to the drain source loop, we get minus VDD plus IDRD that is drop across the resistor RD plus VDS, the voltage across drain and source. On rearranging this equation, we get VDD equals IDRD plus VDS. Now, let us consider the circuit with AC analysis. To do the AC analysis, let us apply the input AC signal VGS for the conceptual circuit shown earlier. The complete circuit is for the AC analysis is as shown here. The total instantaneous gate source voltage is now given by VGS plus capital VGS. The small VGS indicates AC signal plus capital VGS indicates the DC gate source voltage. Addition of VGS AC voltage VGS with DC voltage capital VGS gives total instantaneous gate source voltage as VGS. The corresponding drain current can be calculated as follows. The total instantaneous drain current ID equals AC drain current ID plus the DC drain current ID. Similarly, we can also obtain the output voltage equation VDS as the total instantaneous drain source voltage VDS equals AC drain source voltage VDS and DC drain source voltage VDS. Now let us consider the drain current equation ID the total instantaneous drain current ID is given by half mu n COX times W bell into total instantaneous gate source voltage VGS minus VT whole square. Let us label this as equation 1. As we know that total instantaneous gate source voltage is sum of the DC gate source voltage plus AC gate source voltage. We can substitute uh, this condition in equation 1, we get total instantaneous drain current as half of mu n COX W bell into DC gate source voltage plus AC gate source voltage minus VT the whole square. Now we can uh, separate these equations in proper format. We get total instantaneous drain current as half of mu n COX times W bell into VGS minus VT plus VGS whole square. This equation has been arranged in the form of A plus P whole square. We can expand A plus P whole square as A square plus 2AB plus B square. Therefore, the total instantaneous strain current equation is given by half mu n COX times W bell into VGS minus VT whole square that is A square plus 2AB. 2 into VGS minus VT into VGS plus B square which is VGS 
square. If you observe this equation, there are totally three terms. The first term is called as uh, DC bias current term. The second term in this equation, which is the drain current is proportional to the AC gate source voltage, is called as the AC term or amplifying term, which is proportional to the AC gate source voltage. The third term here, VGS square, where drain current is proportional to the VGS square, is called as nonlinear distortion term, since the drain current is proportional to the square of AC gate source voltage. Let us call this as equation 2. Among all these three terms, the first term is needed or essential to bias the transistor in the saturation region. Therefore, I, the first term DC bias current term is highly essential. If you observe second term, this is the amplifying term where drain current is proportional to the gate source voltage. Even second term is also an essential term. However, the third term where the drain current is proportional to the square of gate source voltage is an undesirable term. Now, to reduce this third term, the effect of third term on the drain current, we will see that uh, what are the necessary conditions. The question here is, how small the distortion should be? We cannot eliminate the third term. However, we can reduce the effect of third term on the drain current equation. To reduce nonlinear distortion introduced by the MOSFET, the condition is VGS must be small. We need to make gate source voltage smaller so that the, uh, the nonlinear distortion uh, introduced by the MOSFET uh, that can be made smaller. Now, let us assume that the third term VGS square is smaller than the second term 2 times VGS minus VT into VGS to reduce the nonlinear distortion. If you simplify this, cancelling VGS on right hand side with one of the term of on left hand side, we get VGS is very much less than 2 times VGS minus VT. On other way, we can say that VGS is less than 2 times overdrive voltage. This condition is called as small signal approximation. If the small signal condition is satisfied, then we can say that nonlinear distortion term or third term in the above equation 2 can be neglected. The resulting equation is written as ID equals half mu n COX times W by L into VGS minus VT whole square plus 2 times VGS minus VT times the uh, AC input signal VGS. The same equation is rewritten with additional explanation. The total instantaneous drain current equals half mu n COX times W by L into VGS minus VT whole square. The first term here is called as DC current at the output which is labeled as capital I and D. Plus we have second term mu n COX into W by L into VGS minus VT into yeah, VGS, small VGS. The second term here represents uh, the amplifying term where the, the first term here, first uh, terms here, mu n COX times W bell into VGS minus VT is called amplitude of the AC signal and VGS is called as AC signal at the input which may be sine or cosine. So therefore, the total instantaneous drain current is sum of uh, DC drain current at the output plus AC drain current at the output. ID equals total instantaneous drain current ID equals DC drain current capital ID plus AC drain current small i and small d. At this point we can define the transconductance of the amplifier. From equation 3 uh, we can write ID equals mu n COX times W well into VGS minus VT into VGS. Let us call this as equation uh, 4. So it is nothing but uh, the second term, the AC drain current equation which we have written here. If you observe this equation, this equation relates uh, AC drain current at the output to the AC gate voltage at the input. 
the same thing is mentioned here this equation relates id ac drain current at the output and vgs ac voltage at the input uh, obtaining id by vgs which is gm that mosfet transconductance gm equals id by vgs which is equal to mu n cox times w bell into vgs minus vt where vgs is the dc gate 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 to source voltage let us call this as equation 5 typical value of gm is 1 milli ampere per volt now the gm is equal to the ratio of ac output drain current to the ac input gate source voltage or this can be written as id equals gm times vgs so these are the important equations for analysis of MOSFET amplifier. Alternatively, equation 5 can be obtained by partially differentiating the equation 1 with respect to uh, the VGS or gate source voltage. That is, GM equals dou ID by dou VGS, which is equal to mu n COX times W bell into VGS minus VT. But we know that ID equals the DC drain current ID equals half mu n COX times W well into VGS minus VT whole square. Now if you can rearrange this, uh, removing the square term here, we obtain root of ID divided by root of half mu n COX into W well as VGS minus VT. Substituting the equation 7 in equation 6, we obtain GM equation as gm equals mu n cox times w bell into root of id divided by root of half mu n cox times w by l if we can simplify this equation we can obtain final equation for the transconductance that is writing the first term as mu n cox into w by l as mu n cox into w by l root and as well as square the root term under uh, the denominator cancels with this uh, term one of this term therefore the final equation for gm is root of 2 times mu n cox into w well into id let us label this as equation 8 this diagram illustrates graphical illustration of small signal operation here we have drawn the mosfet amplifier graphical illustration with vgs and as well as id the here the slope can be uh, the slope of this curve gives us the MOSFET transconductance. The AC input voltage is taken as triangular wave, uh, which is indicated as small v gs, this is the AC input. The amplified DC uh, AC output is uh, shown here with the green color. So the amplified output current is uh, again the triangular. We can observe here the phase of the output uh, drain current is uh, inverted as we see the input uh, AC voltage. This gives us the output of a common source amplifier gives 180 degree uh, phase shift with respect to the input. And at the bias point, if we take the slope, that gives us the MOSFET transconductance. Now let us determine the voltage gain of the MOSFET amplifier. The total instantaneous drain to source voltage is given by VDS equals VDD minus ID times RD, but we know that VDS equals VDS plus VDS, that is a DC drain source voltage and AC drain source voltage, and also the total instantaneous drain current is given by the DC drain current ID plus the AC drain current, which is small ID. We can substitute 10 in equation 9 so that we obtain the expression for the voltage gain, that is. We get VDS plus small VDS equals VDD minus DC drain current ID plus AC drain current ID into RD. Now you can see that the DC drain source voltage can be substituted as VDD minus ID RD. Therefore, the resulting equation is VDD minus ID RD plus DC, uh, sorry, the VDS, that's AC drain source voltage, equals VDD minus IDRD minus ID times RD. We can cancel from both left side and right side VDD minus ID RD. 
therefore the resulting uh, ac drains of voltage is minus id times rd so this is called as ac output voltage but we know that id is equal to gm times vgs if we substitute id as gm times vgs in the above equation we obtain vds as the ac drain source voltage as minus gm times vgs into rd now we know that voltage gain av is given by dc vds vds divided by vgs that is uh, dc uh, the drain source voltage at the uh, ac drain source voltage at the output divided by ac gate source voltage at the input that is vds by vgs which is equal to minus gm times the rd the negative sign here indicates uh, vds is 180 degree out of phase with respect to the ac gate source voltage now you can apply you can also obtain the same equation by considering the ac model uh, of the original conceptual circuit the ac model circuit looks like this if you apply kvl from uh, the drain to source you obtain id rd plus vds equals to 0 this implies that vds equals minus id times rd the same equation we also obtained uh, earlier through the uh, equation based method now we obtained the uh, similar equation by applying the kvl to the ac equivalent circuit model by shorting all dc voltages to ground uh, we can obtain the ac equivalent circuit model